Say hi. Hi. No, say hi here. Come on. Can say hi. Can I talk in your mic? Yeah, the mic's on. You don't have to do that for it to hear you. Go ahead, now talk. Who's going to see this? Nobody. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you got a good laugh out of that. The wife, she's a trip. Uh, all right, guys, today what we're going to do is we are going to go over the Revolt OSD. This is the schizo version, so it's a little bit cooler looking, but overall, there's really nothing different about it. I'm getting ready to put it into a dark matter frame build, and I think you guys will enjoy to watch that. Stay tuned and enjoy. All right, so here we are. We got this thing on the bench. We're going to go ahead and crack her open, see what we got. Alright, so there's your different connectors. We're going to go over those here in a minute. You got your grommets, your rubber grommets. These are your gummies to soft mount your flight controller. We're going to go ahead and get those in too. And there it is. Let's see what we got. Alright, that's a good looking flight controller. Look at that thing. Alright, so... With this flight controller, they talk about it being the easiest flight controller to work with because it comes with all these different connectors. And with these, I mean, you can pretty much just plug and play. It brings a new definition to plug and play. we got all these different connectors here. I mean, it really makes life easy. Let me get you guys up close here so you can see what we're working with. There we go. Alright, so this board's got three UARTs. You can go ahead, uh, just so you know, you got a, a ground and a 5 volt here. You've got a 3 volt here. You've got TX4, ground, 5 volt, RX3, and TX1. For this TX4, so whatever UART you're going to connect here. So, for example, if you're going to do a receiver here, you're going to want to connect your UART. You got your 5 volt and your ground available right here. And what happens is in order to control this UART, depending on what your signal is, if your signal is inverted, so for example, FR Sky, which runs an inverted signal, you're going to solder the middle pad to the inverted pad, the INV, that stands for inverted. You're going to bridge those two pads together, and then you're going to have that covered. If you're running something that does not run inverted, for example, Crossfire, which I'm going to show you where to solder the Crossfire next, but for Crossfire, you're going to bridge these two pads to the right if you were going to use TX4. Alright guys, I want to show you how to connect your Crossfire receiver also to this board. So this way, uh, if you are unsure how to do it, I can show you. This is the Crossfire Nano. I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set your connector. So you're going to use this connector here. Use any one of these two. These two um, actually just have different wiring locations, but they are ultimately the same so I would go ahead and plug this in and then what you're gonna do is go ahead and get your crossfire nano ready and then obviously you want to cut to your wired length depending on where you're gonna mount this and you're gonna connect your ground your 5 volt your RX and your TX um, I did say those backwards this one is RX and this one is TX Alright guys, next we're going to go over connecting your camera. So if you're going to connect your camera up, it's pretty simple. You put your connector in, boom, you got it. And then what you do is plug in. Don't pay attention to this. This is an old connector. You're going to take this side and you will take your connector just like this. I have an old connector and you can connect these wires together. Boom, and then you got it. Or you are welcome to use this connector because if you're going to connect your connect camera you're going to want to use this connector here you plug it in right there boom you've got your 5 volt ground video and this one does not have camera control but you would plug this connector in I mean it's 
I mean, look. When they say plug and play, they're not kidding. There you go. So, if, if you're going to solder up by using your motor signal pads, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead. Let me get in here close. So, you got stuff for your GPS. You've got your CS. You got your SCK. You've got your MISO, your MOSI. And then your 5 volt and ground. All that is going to be related to GPS. You can still utilize the 5 volt and the ground if you want to. You can use it forever you want. Now, working from the bottom, you got VBAT. You got your current sensor that we talked about. Remember, if you're going to do current sensing right off of this pad here, you need to make sure that you bridge depending whether you're running BL Heli S or if you're running BL Heli 32. Then, after that, you've got your uh, motor 1, motor 2, motor 3, motor 4. Those are your signal wires that you'll solder up right there. That is if you're not going to use the connector, which I recommend using the connector. Make life easy. And then put your grommets in. So that's the pin layout. That's the pin out, the wiring diagram. That's everything that you need to know if you're going to be soldering up this board. Uh, there's really not much soldering due to the cable connectors, which are pretty awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to flash this board and then that way you'll have everything you need to know. If you already bought it, now you know how to work with it. If you haven't bought it, now you have a little bit of information before you do. Alright pilots, go ahead and open up your Flight 1 configurator. Uh, right now I have the 1.2.75 and as of today's date there is a .85 available. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into DFU mode. It boots the flight controller uh, into that mode and that allows the bootloader and firmware to be updated. Uh, it's also used when you're coming from a really old version or if you want to wipe the settings completely. It can also be used to restore a flight controller that's no longer connecting properly. Uh, one more thing to keep in mind is that if your S port is soldered, I would go ahead and unsolder that because sometimes DFU mode won't work. And you don't need to solder the boot pins for this to work. Okay, go ahead and connect your flight controller. Alright, so here we are now. We're going to go ahead and update firmware. We just talked about the 1.2.85. Go ahead and click on that, hit confirm, and then go ahead and let Flight 1 do its thing. That's one of the awesome things about Flight 1. It's very, very user friendly. Uh, there's really not much to it. You saw how easy that was. Do not disconnect your board while it's flashing, in case you didn't know that, or read it. Alright, the firmware was successfully flashed. Okay, there we go. Good to go, guys. Need to open up. Look at this. They found some previous board settings. Pilot name, flight one. Nah, we don't want to import it. We want to do it fresh. Continue. And I'm not going to walk you guys through this right now. We're going to finish the build. And then uh, at that point, we'll go over more. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. And we hope to see you soon.